Hey guys, this is System, and this is Sky Factory 1. Hope everyone is well having a out of the maze day. Let's go ahead and jump back into this pretty cool packet. Uh, in between episodes, have not done much, did a little bit of crafting. So it, here I have a chest full of goodies. We're going to go set up here in a few minutes, like our fine storage system. Down here, I have a platform. Have this, this is a white elevator. Doesn't have to be white, but it's a elevator. Pretty easy to make. So we get to, I guess, an uh, elevator. Check that out right here. This takes a little bit of wool and enter brawl, but hit shift and space and go up and down. Made a platform down here just to move our base automations, I guess, down here, because we're going to have to have access to probably cabling in time down here. So I like having a platform. Makes things a lot easier and down really awesome. You use a block on these two, kind of set what they look like. So I did that. Then I set the direction so I always know what block it is because I always see an arrow. But you don't have to set the arrow. It just makes it so you always face that direction when you use that thing. So really useful and uh, really awesome. One thing you guys keep telling me to do too is this here. So I'm going to do it real quick. There you go. You use a four shears on a cow. You can actually use it to get yourself leather straight from the cow. You get anywhere from one to two leather and just do that with the four shears, which is pretty awesome. And uh, I'm pretty sure it comes back in time. Not 100% sure, but basically we got a nudie cow now. So a uh, naked cow running around the base doing his thing. And I thought that was pretty neat as well. So let's go ahead and uh, drop that off right there. And we're going to go ahead and jump straight into refined storage. So the only really, I'll show you what you basically need to get this going. So what you need is uh, silicon. Silicon is just going to be smelted down quartz. So that's easy. You need a bunch of this processor binding. So string and slime, which we set up yesterday. Quartz and rich, which is just iron and quartz. Outside of that, the only other things you're really going to need are the processors. You go to the processors here. I believe I still need to make one. So let's grab you. Actually, I might need a, I think I need two of those as well. So let's do that. And then, yeah, once you have this, you smelt these down. This will turn to the processors. And that's all the kind of main components, right? So really easy to make and uh, really simple. But anyway, and here I have pretty much everything all crafted up. So we're going to grab most of this, just like so. Show you this here, too. This is the 16K storage part. It's going to be the thing that uh, stores all the items on it. This thing will be able to store 16,000. A little expensive, so it takes a little bit of gold here. And then it takes a whole bunch of these basic processors. And you need nine of these 1Ks to be able to make the... I guess the um, 16K, and then you need three of them to make the 4Ks. And each level, of course, holds more and more and more. But as you get up, it's nested crafting, so it gets more and more expensive. So that's basically how that works there. But anyway, let's go ahead and make a grid here. The grid is going to be, the I guess, the item that lets us interact with it uh, the most. I have not the most. It's going to let us interact with the actual system, right? So anyway, go ahead and grab ourselves a grid, just like that. Then we're going to grab a crafting grid. This one's going to make it so we can actually craft within our system. Otherwise, we can't do much with it. Next thing we need is a disk drive. Let's go ahead and grab that. No, it's just a drive, isn't it, with this one. Go ahead and grab you. Sweet. And then the last thing we need here is going to be a controller. The controller is basically the power um, acceptor for the mod. And um, yeah, basically it doesn't do much, but it doesn't work without it. So you have to have this. It's basically the brain, right? So anyway, let's grab that, that, and that. That's pretty much everything there. Should be able to take that, pop that there, put a drive on top of, I guess this, oh, I put it in the wrong space. Let's do that there. Then grab ourselves the grid and pop that on top. Awesome. Also, we get this cool mod in here. It's actually like a wall climb mod. So if you run on something, then hit shift, hold shift, then let go. It uh, grabs hold, then when you let go, it jumps you up. So you can actually use it, kind of get up and down things. Let you jump up like an extra one or two blocks, which I thought was pretty neat. But anyway, let's go grab this. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing hooked up to power here. So yesterday when I set up this uh, redstone furnace to the power, I did it wrong. You don't actually need two transfer no uh, I guess, uh, nodes here. I'm actually doing the wrong thing here. We need to go ahead, go here, go to uh, shift and right click that. See there, it saves the position. And then we just put this in here. So I go ahead and uh, pop the old one out, pop that one there, and that should light up, right? And that's powering this now. So yeah, they just changed these where they're just, uh, they used to be able to do a whole bunch of, uh, I guess, different things at once. And they can't do that anymore. They just do the ones. So they're a little more limited, which makes them make a little more sense because they used to be a little OP. But anyway, that's the thing. Next thing we'll do here is go ahead and grab the storage part and turn that into an actual storage drive. So grab that right there. Go ahead and pop that into the disk drive. And now we can actually store things in here. We have a fully working system, basically. So if I start dropping things off, get all stored in here. Always set this to, uh, I like it all in uh, medium myself. Then I like to set the search box to JEI synchronized, and uh, we're pretty much good to go. We have a fully working storage system. Apparently, I didn't actually need uh, those processors, but we'll definitely use them later on. But again, now, let's go ahead, take everything, throw it in the system, then we can go ahead and work on other things. So 
Down here, you'll see your usage of power. This one's only using 5 FE. And in here, we can actually see our drive. Only have 723 items in there. But very quickly, we'll kind of max that out and probably need more. So anyway, we'll have to expand on that in time. But for right now, this actually works perfectly. So there we go. The cow did regrow his skin. So that is pretty cool. I'm just going to leave him with his skin right now because I'm not really worried about that. Did go ahead and get all our items into the system. So we have about, uh, yeah, 3353, which is not too bad, of 16,000. So lots of space still to kind of get stuff done. And uh, that is cool. I did go ahead and set up one more machine here. I have this one here, a multi servo press, because I needed some electron plates. And uh, get them done is really easy. So just like this. Right there, there's the electrum in there, does the thing. And this machine is actually not too bad to make. It did take two new alloys though. So I had to do some bronze. So that says copper and uh, tin. I did use the fire charge too. So you could do this in the tinkers as well. So you could do it this way, but I was lazy. So I went ahead and did that. And then I had to do the constant as well. So there was constant and bronze and I got them both done. And I both did them both for fire charges. So that is cool. But I went ahead and made those uh, upgrades here. So I actually have these linkage. I have three of them, so that's cool. That's going to make the machines run faster and uh, just be better all around. So we'll go ahead and, uh, I guess, do a setup for sand, gravel, and dust really quick. So let's go ahead and uh, get that done. Go ahead and uh, clear out this area here. Go ahead and give ourselves some energy cables because we'll need them on the bottom. Grab ourselves a cobblestone generator. Probably sit that right there. And uh, that is good. First thing we need to do is kind of wire up the power. So we'll go ahead and uh, set the, I guess, coordinates on that cable. And we'll be able to power it directly from there to the cable. So that is actually pretty cool. Let's go ahead and hunt this down. We've got a energy transfer node. Pop that in there. Go ahead and throw that in there. And that should be a fully powered cable now. So that is really cool and uh, very useful. Let's go ahead and do that, that, and that. Hopefully right there. And that's going to be how we have our machine set up. So the first thing we want to worry about, I guess, is go ahead and grab some vital cable. Probably start pulling this in. And then we'd want to have a extract on that as well. So we'll do that on the bottom. Then we'll have to set up the sides of the machine. See, the machine has, uh, I guess, cable in it already. We are not, sorry, uh, power in it already. So that's the thing. Let's we'll set the input right there. And then auto input, auto output. And uh, that machine should be pretty much configured now. I'm going to go ahead and do another thing here too. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some upgrades. I'm going to give it a item filter. That's going to want to filter some items here. And then I'm also going to give it a resonant upgrade, I guess, as well as two of these linkage. You'll see the power is going to go insane. So I don't know if we're going to be able to keep up with this. I may have to down this a little bit. We're going to have to check our power. I may only run one linkage because you see how much more that adds. But I want all these machines kind of like different speeds. And I want that for a reason. Because otherwise we're going to end up uh, fully buffered on dust. And then have to wait for sand to gravel. I don't really want to do that. So I'm hoping this will work here. But uh, it's just really a matter of power if it does it. I could ramp that up. Anyway, so we'll have that one kind of set like that. This here too, the filter, is going to be actually for this here. So I'm going to actually go ahead and put that there. Right now, the machine thinks it can only get flint. I guess I'll need a cobblestone as well, but you'll notice that the cobblestone's not going up anymore, so that's a problem. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go in here, do that right there, and there you go. It's just uh, going to make it so it can only get, uh, I guess, flint and, uh, I guess, cobble right now. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and set up, uh, I guess, a little mini drawer system. So we'll go ahead and throw a drawer controller here. Then we'll go ahead and throw a drawer slave here and a drawer slave here. These are from storage drawers. They just take a little bit of a quartz. I think it's like imperatives, right? So... Just stuff like that to get them made. Really useful though. They basically let you input and output things um, into these drawers kind of automatically. It's kind of the whole point. The slaves are just basically versions of this, but you can only have one of these per kind of system. So these are just basically um, extras of these. They're like proxies, right? So that's uh, what they're going to be doing. But basically it's going to make it so we can put these items into these drawers, right? And then pull the items back out if we need them as well. So let's go ahead and uh, I guess uh, grab a key here. This is from storage drawers as well. Super easy. Go ahead and right-click that. That's going to lock all these drawers and make it so we can manually filter them. So if we go ahead and grab this stuff here, there you go. Grab ourselves the sand, that. There you go. We'll put the gravel there, I guess. We'll put the sand here. Then we'll go ahead and grab the flint and pump it up there. There you go. And then we'll set this machine right here to input-output. And that's going to make it so it can export the items into the system as well as pull the flint back in. The flint's going to make it so you get more of those secondary outputs because usually you'd only get gravel when you grind things down. But the bonus ones like the flint in the sand uh, get increased by having flint in here. So that's why I'm setting that to input output. Plus it also gets rid of the flint so we don't end up with a ton of it. Uh, next one we probably want to go ahead and set a input and output on that one. I want to make sure this one's actually set to sand though. I should have filtered this first. Uh, oh, I don't have auto input on first. Good. 
Let's go ahead and put our upgrades in. So we'd have this one and this one, and then we give this one a flux linkage as well. Then this one here, we want to set the filter. That would be the sand. Oh, no, it wouldn't be sand. It'd be gravel on this one. <laughs> there you go. Go ahead and set this one to gravel. There you go. And then flint. Set that to just like that. And this one should be ready to go too. So we should be able to go here, go to auto input and output. And that should start working once we do that there. There you go. Already have a stack gravel and uh, it's processing. Anyway, let's go ahead and head over here. Go to here. Go ahead and throw in item filter. This one we want to set up to sand, right? Then flint. We'll do auto input. There you go. And then this one should be ready to go as well. This one here, I'm just going to put a hardened integral component. I'll explain that in a second. And uh, that should be good to go there. Yeah? Yeah, good. So if I go ahead and filter that now, that'll get rid of that. This one here will set to input output. And then this should be pretty much ready to go. Let's see here if it actually does the thing. I need to turn that on and that on, right? Oh, I need to set it to input output. There you go. So this will be the whole system here. You notice that we already have sand, we already have gravel, we already have dust. Now, the reason I have these all kind of like different speeds, right? So I have the two linkage in here, so this one goes faster. Because if these were all the same speed, all that's going to happen is in the end, you're going to end up having to wait for it to fill up on dust first. And then, yeah, it's no good to you, right? It's no good at all. It's just going to take forever to fill up on dust. This way, it actually is going to fill up a little more evenly, basically. It's what it's going to do. It should be much more, I guess, timely and could, uh, I guess, more efficient of getting the different kinds of resources as to just 2,000 dust first, then 2,000 sand is what it would fill up on next, then 2,000 gravel, right? So this is going to make everything fill up nice and evenly. I just need to make sure our power is actually keeping up because otherwise I may have to go ahead and make a couple more crucibles and get this done. But it looks like it's actually good here. But uh, I guess the main test is going to be our lava. I guess we'll find out in time. We are backed up. Oh, these ones are starting to run down, though. We might be a little low on power. Yeah, I think we might be. Unless it wasn't backed up to begin with. Yeah, I may have to go ahead and throw in a couple more crucibles. So I can put, like, two more here. Then two more on the other side. Then we should be good, I think, right? But anyway, definitely working. Definitely doing its thing. And, uh, yeah, we'll end up getting a ton of those materials. And all I have to do now is basically pipe directly from whichever one of these I want it directly into the click machine. But... I'm going to wait for it to fill up, and then I'll kind of do it in batches. Then I'll turn these off, then let it run, clear out whichever drawer I want to clear out, probably all of them, and then turn it back on, right? So really good little system, really clean, and uh, yeah, just kind of keeps things filling up at a steady pace. So quite happy about that. So I've been watching this setup for a little bit, and uh, it's running pretty well. It's actually doing what it needs to. I'm actually going to swamp this one over here to make a little more uh, power balance, I guess, for right now. I am going to go ahead and change these, probably set up a little bit too. So I'll probably end up with this one here, resident in this one. Then I'll end up with the uh, reinforced integral in this one. Then this one will be slightly faster than that one because right now it's a little on balance, right? So it's getting about twice, twice as much sand as it is dust. Now I really want them to be around the same number, which will work out quite well. And the gravel, now that's slowing that down, should catch up as well. Kind of have to see how that works there. But once that's up one level, that should kind of balance out there. That'll work. But it doesn't matter because we're going to run out of power, right? So our lava's running down quickly. And once all the lava buffer that's in these cables is gone, it, we're going to run out of power. So it's only going to take a matter of time. So we need to deal with that. So the way I want to deal with that is actually to head to the nether. I think we're going to do that. Let me go ahead and make another one of these too. I want to make a wither charm so we deal with the, that's the withers uh, that are over there, the wither skeletons. That would be a thing. We do have wither roses that we get from bone mealing wrasse. So that was really easy. It's actually in here somewhere. I got four of them right there. Go ahead and drop that off. I'll have to make some of those lava charms. We'll do that in a couple minutes. Uh, the main thing is going to be fire resistance, actually. So we'll go ahead and work on that. Let's go ahead and grab a cauldron. Because uh, we actually have a way of doing it with cauldrons in this pack. So let's grab that. Grab ourselves a campfire. Just like so. There you go. Then we're going to need a piece of redstone, right? Then we're going to need a magma cream. Hunt that down. That looks good right there. And then we're gonna need a nether ward. So let's actually go grab one of those puppies. Oh, don't don't poke me. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab you. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and see if we can get this done here. Oh, we need a bucket as well. So bucket, awesome and awesome. So what we're gonna do here is go ahead and throw down the uh, campfire. We won't do it there because the cow's head's in the way. Go ahead and grab the cauldron, pop that on top. Go ahead and get ourselves a bucket of water. It's kind of like so. Go ahead and fill this up. Then when we go ahead and throw in the nether wart, we can actually do it in here instead of, uh, I guess, the, the regular way, right? So this is like an alternative way 
of making this stuff. So kind of shows you here too. So get the potion resistance, then you go down to the awkward, and so on and so forth. Just needs a heat source underneath. We need to wait for this to boil. Then it'll finally make a sound. And then when it has the, I guess after it makes a sound, we can actually put in our next resource. So that is cool. Okay, now we have a wither term. And uh, basically we can just right click, turn off or on. So that is cool. Protect us when we're in the nether from withers, which is awesome. And I don't think we have turned off. So that's the thing. I think also we just got our potions done. So we should be able to just do that there. Got ourselves fire resist eight minutes. So yeah, really easy to do that as well. And uh, we may go ahead and upgrade our armor real quick too. So let's actually grab that right there. And uh, I'm not going to go with like diamond armor because I'm a little little poor in that regards right now. I actually don't have a ton of diamonds, but okay. We're going to work on that soon enough. That is what the automation was for. I just basically need to get into this dimension long enough to get a blaze spawner. And uh, once we have blaze spawner, we should be fine because uh, then we'll be able to get blazing blood and that'll be able to uh, speed up our lava immensely. So that is cool. I mean, that's good there. Let's go ahead and grab some iron. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and uh, do a slight upgrade on armor. Which one did I put in? This one right here. There you go. Go ahead and make the night vision. We're going to make a upgraded version of that night, night vision because it'll be very nice for that dimension and uh, really good. But uh, we are going to need rain stained glass. I think I threw this away too because I didn't think I was going to need it. But uh, now I obviously do. Go grab our string here. Apparently I forgot to put it in the system. So one there, one there. And that looks good. This will at least have a tiny bit of armor on it. Then I guess we'll do some force armor as well. So let's go ahead and grab that. So that should be pretty easy, right? So if I don't do the helmet, how many ingots do I need? I have no idea. <laughs> I guess, uh, what, five less? So 19, right? We need uh, 19 of these ingots. So I don't know how many we have in the system. Let's just make a 20. That should be good there. Make ourselves a chest plate. That's good. And I guess a pair of leggings. That's awesome. And then some booties, right? So that, 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 and that. There you go. And uh, we actually have at least some level of production for the uh, dimension we're going to head to. So that is cool. So yeah, we look pretty goofy now. And uh, I, I do have a pretty silly mask. I guess that kind of goes without saying. But uh, yeah, we have kind of messed up armor here. I guess you can't even see my glasses right now. I thought we were going to look at my glasses just see my big bulbous head. But yeah, we do have a little bit of armor. Not very much. Like I said, I'm trying to just get into this dimension and get out as fast as I can. I need to basically just grab all our wheat here, go ahead and make some food, get ourselves some bread, then we'll go ahead and grab a portal and uh, we'll jump over to the, uh, I guess, nether. So this is actually producing quite well. We're actually getting resources at a pretty good pace, which is not too bad. Just letting it uh, run through all the stuff that's coming in currently. And uh, it's just building up inside these chests, right? So not too bad and uh, definitely going to have to work on storage and I guess compression of some of these items later on, like this stuff right here, right? I've already gone ahead and done that, right? We're gonna have to have a way of doing that automatically. But for right now, this works and uh, it's gonna get us resources, which is awesome all around. Same pretty balance too. Uh, I need to speed up the sand a tiny bit now and the gravel, but after that, I think it'll be kind of all the same speed. So anyway, we'll kind of work on that later. That's kind of what we're working towards, right? Getting us a little more power. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves some obsidian. We actually don't even have a diamond pick right now, so I guess technically I can't break this, but at the same time, I don't really care that much. So that's a thing. Anyway, let's go up here. Awesome. We can make a pick anytime, but it's not that big a deal, I guess. Go ahead and grab you. Go ahead and use our flint. There we go. We got our portal. So I have fire resistance. I have the wither charm. I should probably go ahead and equip this thing, too. Uh, it is on right now. Uh, the, where's the charm slots at? Are they down here? Is this charms? No, where's charms? Can, can you just... uh? Go to a slot? <laughs> Which one's a charm slot? I thought one of these was a charm slot. Oh, there there is. Oh, it's these ones right here, the little necklace look of things. Looks like we'll wear a bunch of them as well. We can't actually make the uh, fire charm either uh, because we can't get blaze frogs yet. And they don't have the recipe with the multi servo press that I usually do. So we don't really have that option. But anyway, let's go ahead and grab that. Grab you. Make sure we have our food on our bar. Make sure we have potions if we need them. And I don't know why I have glowstone, but we do. Anyway, let's go ahead and drop off one more item just so we don't have it here. There you go. <laughs> and in here, we also need to have this sack ready to go. Because if we see a spawner, we're just grabbing and dashing. We're just totally dying and dashing. So yeah, let's go ahead and see what kind of spawn we got here. Hopefully. There you go. To head through here. There you go. We've got a fortress right over there, which is not too bad. Actually pretty close. I know they've ramped up um, the fortresses in this pack. I think Darth Doso tried to set up so... No matter what, anyone that comes through a portal will be able to see one on their map. 
So that was kind of the plan he was going for. You can see there, we can actually see it quite clearly. We are gonna have to go down there though. And uh, that is the worst part of that. I may go grab, actually before we go through here, let's make sure I have some ladders on me just so I can get out of here really easy. Cause I don't want to uh, deal with that. We don't have quark, so I can't actually build downward staircases really easy. Although we do have ropes, so I guess I could do that, but ladders are just easier. Let's do that there. Maybe make a couple more. That is good. And that should be more enough to get us out of this dimension uh, when we're done here. We should be able to find a spotter here, no problem though. So that is cool. And uh, should be exactly what we need to sort out a problem. I keep going out the wrong way though. Oh, wait, nope. I'm trying to see what we see here. I don't actually see one yet, but I guess, uh, I guess we gotta get down there. We gotta deal with this and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how much fall damage I'm gonna take here, but I guess it doesn't matter too much. But I will want to uh, set up the ladder to get us back up here pretty quickly because uh, this is going to be our only way in and out of this place, right? And uh be nice if uh, we had a way of actually getting out. <laughs> anyway, I'm good there. Is that actually over that? I'm not sure. I'm paranoid now. And why is there got to be two skeletons right here? I'm here, guys. Oh, no. I died. At least it's clear. <laughs> that wasn't very lucky at all. Anyway, I need to go back and get my stuff. So I got my corpse back and I've actually uh, drank a fire resistance this time. So we're actually in a little better shape here. Uh, I did have a couple of the wither skeletons around, but uh, not too big a deal. Hopefully we can actually find ourselves a spawner here pretty quick. I wish I had really good food right now. I didn't really think about better foods. And I don't know if there's actually many options for us, but oh, we actually have a spawner right there. <laughs> That's actually really, really easy. Uh, if I get rid of these guys really quick, I could probably just do that. There you go. Maybe get rid of that fella. There you go. And uh, see if we can actually get by. With the fire resistance, I don't really have to worry about the blazes that much, I guess. Uh, I'd like to deal with this guy, though. There you go. Hopefully nothing behind me. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, use this empty sack of holding on the spawner. That looks good there. And I may just run the heck out of here, to be honest. This fire is not a problem at all. I could do a little bit exploring, but this low armor, I don't know if it's worth it at all. To be honest, oh my goodness. Because we're in a void world, because it's like a void world uh, nether, there's just so many spawns. They're just everywhere. So maybe maybe I just get out of here. Maybe that's the play. Maybe that's the plan. Because <laughs> uh, this isn't going good for me right now. And, uh, with this, we'll be able to actually speed up our lava setups anyway. Did I finally get a place run? Nice. Anyway, I'm going to pillar up here and uh, see if we can actually get us back home. So anyway, I'll be back in a few. So we're back from the nether and we're gonna go ahead and uh, set up a little kind of setup here on top of the smeltery. Just a very quick and dirty one. Something like that there. I'm gonna put the spawner like right here. Actually, maybe one higher. Just right there. There you go. And then, yeah, they'll spawn in here. We'll fall down. we get smelted in the smeltery and turn into blazing blood. So that is uh, basically what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and get that set up. Should only take a second and uh, should be pretty easy. Now, I know that we have the mod apotheosis in here, but I don't think we have the module for the spawners. So it's kind of like a, a mod that has modules, right? And uh, yeah, I don't think we have that one. Maybe it wasn't in the original. I honestly can't remember the original very well. It's been so long since I've played it. So yeah, very, very long time. And uh, not sure if it was in there or not, but if it wasn't, Dark Osta would have purposely not put it in here, right? He put in a couple quality of life things that, uh, you know, weren't in the original, but uh, mostly just trying to keep it true to the original. But anyway, let's go down here. Go down here, that looks good. And if it wasn't here, usually you can do this too. So this is my reasoning for not thinking it's in here. You go to Apotheosis, then you go uh, Spawner. It's not showing any, because usually you have one listed here that you can click on and go to Uses on. But uh, yeah, I haven't gone through and uh, looked if it was actually in there, but it doesn't matter either way. I just need this for short term. Let's go ahead and put that there. Sweet, we already got ourselves a blaze. Should start falling down there. Could you please not shoot me? That'd be great. Kind of get this sealed off here. You can hear he's actually getting smelted down. He's taking damage. I believe we get 20 millibuckets of blazing blood for every heart of damage done to the mod. So, uh, mob. So, I guess that's the thing. And that's pretty cool. I did try a block on one of these spawners too. Because I couldn't remember. I remember you have to break them with silk touch. With apotheosis. That's usually how you get the spawner. And then I knew you could use a clock on them. But I didn't know with the sack it was going to be an apotheosis spawner, so I was testing it. Then I was just like, it's probably not in here because I'm not seeing the modifiers anyway. So I guess that's the thing. But anyway, down here we got some blazing blood. Got a half bucket. Once we have a few bucks of that, we need to go ahead and throw it underneath our lava. 
Uh, we have like 16 crucibles, so maybe I'll wait for about 16 against uh, buckets of lava. And then, yeah, we'll come and uh, set those all up. And then we're going to have insane lava production, at which point I'll be able to uh, max out those uh, generators. Each one of them will produce. I think it's like a... I forget how much. Is it like 640 on those generators? It's pretty good either way. So that is good. And uh, we're looking pretty awesome here. It's actually really cool. So I had a little uh, accident here. Actually, my uh, I guess my muff farm burnt down. <laughs> Not that it really matters that much, but yeah, it must have came from a blaze. I was over here kind of AFKing, doing my thing. And uh, yeah, I had to change this too. You notice that they're kind of peeking at me right there. So I've been kind of like coming here, then knocking them in, make sure they fall in the center. And then that jazz, because otherwise they were spawning outside at nighttime. And uh, yeah, just it's an issue all around. I can make fans right from the cyclic and uh, kind of push them in the center or something like that. I only need this for 18 buckets, so I'm not too concerned. Maybe later on, if we need some more of it, I'll kind of deal with it then. But uh, for right now, I guess this works. Other than, again, I burned down my mob farm. So anyway, that's a thing. And uh, not too worried about that. Get in there. There you go. Anyway, so it is working. It's doing its thing. Uh, the other fans do. There's like two sets of fans. There's cyclic ones. They're only one wide. Then the other ones take feathers, and I don't really have feathers yet because I don't have an automated mob farm. Also, we got a blaze statue. Look at that. We got all kinds of stuff. So, anyway, that's the thing. Retreat from fire, apparently. So, anyway, that's that. I don't know why I hit that there. We're going to go ahead and uh, start getting this in place. I don't have a ton of this yet. How much do I have? I have 12 buckets. We need 18, right? So, we are almost there. Either way, we need, uh, I guess, go ahead and uh, break this puppy right there. Then I should be able to grab a bucket here, hopefully. Do this. And hopefully put it right in that spot. And that's probably going to put out all the fires or not. I don't know if that's going to put out the fires. I guess we'll find out real quick here. There you go. <laughs> did that put out all the fires? Yeah, it did. It did. Okay, I, I didn't hear the normal fire, uh, fire going out sound. So I wasn't uh, actually sure if it actually worked there. Uh, putting out the fires. That's a little strange. It did not sound like it extinguished them at all. Because usually you get that uh, kind of loud sound there. Definitely didn't get that. Also, I'm not sure if I actually burned myself with this stuff either. I never tested that. But anyway, that's good there. We got all of them. Should be able to start getting these in place. And once they're in place, we should have pretty good heat source here for our crucibles, right? Basically, I can go ahead and uh, grab these and uh, place them here. Sweet. And you'll see there the heat is 14 now. So it's actually 14 times speed. Going to be a lot quicker. And uh, this should handle all of our lava issues. So... I'll just leave it like that right now. Come back with the other six later on. Should check this too. What's this heat? Oh, does this work as flow? What? I could have done this with like one or two. It works on flowing? The flowing works. Does it work on all of it? No, that's one less. Is this going to be one less? I might as well put them in place right now. Okay, so at least it's not 100% benefit. <laughs> but definitely you're getting your heat because it's going from 14... 13 to 11 so you're losing a little bit as you go from the main source of the uh actual liquid but it's still working either way but that should make it so that I can keep up to that no problem now that shouldn't uh have any problem anymore and that's actually awesome so that is really good and i'll be able to upgrade our generators which will be awesome as well so if we go where are they at they're down on the ground here right there there you go hopefully yeah the buffers are already filled up again which means it's probably filling up here and uh, probably start seeing it in the tanks here as well. You know, this one's already having its lava go up. So definitely really awesome. Really good. Look at that, man. Just buffered up like it was nothing. So yeah, definitely really, really awesome. And uh, happy about that. But I think I'm going to go ahead and actually end this one here. And uh, hopefully not uh, burn down any more of my base. So anyway, as always, you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. I want you guys all have a good one. See you guys next video. Later.